Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do a little disassembly and cleaning of the Smith & Wesson M&P9 Pro Series Core model. Now it's very similar to the basic M&P and its basic disassembly, but it is a unique model, so that's why we're going to give it its own cleaning video. Uh, I want to send a shout out to my friend L that uh, loaned me this pistol for the video. And uh, we had a chance to shoot it last night. We put a few rounds down range. It ran like a champ. So we're going to go ahead and get it cleaned up. Uh, but before we do that, let's go and talk about the basic cleaning supplies that you can use to clean this pistol. All right, so let's talk about what you can use for oils and cleaners and all that fun stuff. I just like to use cleanse oil field and range. Um, it's basically a two-step process. You wipe it on, you wipe it off, wipe it on one more time, and you're all set to go. This does a clean lubrication and protection all in one. You know, you can also use, uh, what, Safari Land Break-Free CLP. That also basically does the same thing. Uh, this will pretty much take care of the majority of the needs that you're going to have for just basic pistol maintenance. Uh, also nice to have some rubber or nitrile gloves around. We like to keep that lead off our hands and any of the chemicals that we're going to be using to clean for today. Uh, cotton patches, I just buy these in bulk up at Shields. I get 500 count bags for about 15 bucks. You can cut up an old cotton t-shirt if you want to, but these are kind of nice because they're thin, so they get in all those little cracks and crevices and makes it super easy to clean. Uh, when it comes to actually cleaning the barrel, you have lots of options. This is just a nylon uh, bristle brush. This will do a pretty good job for you. Won't necessarily take out like heavy brass or copper deposits, but it does a good job of just keeping the barrel clean. Otherwise, you can get yourself a traditional 9mm cleaning kit with a bore brush if you want to and a bore mop. Or what I like to do is just use a bore snake, which you guys will see a little bit later on. Uh, these cost around 10 bucks, 15 bucks, and you just pull them through a couple times with some lubricant on them, and uh, your barrel comes out clean, so they work really good. Uh, also, instead of using Q-tips, I like to use Tipton Power Swabs. These are about four or five bucks for a pack. Uh, they're nice because they're a little more rigid than Q-tips, so they don't break as easy, and also they don't fray out like a Q-tip will. Not that little thread threads are gonna cause any issues or anything like that, but uh, it's nice to have something a little more durable for the cleaning. You can also use some old uh, toothbrushes if you want to, and these are some Allen, uh, I think Allen brand, is this Allen? Oh no, these are Hoppies. Hoppies nylon cleaning brushes. I don't like to use brass or metal brushes on my firearms, but you can always go nylon if you want to. Again, I got a cleaning rod that came with a Glock, and I tend to just put patches through here and use that to clean out the barrel, which you guys will see here in a little bit. Uh, bore light is kind of nice to have. It's a little bit handy to look down the bore and make sure it's clean. Um, and then of course, always, you know, as, as is the tradition on the channel, you got to have yourself a nice cup of coffee for the afternoon. Now, I do want to apologize, guys. I'm dog sitting, so you might hear some gruffing or howling or barking in the background. Uh, we're just going to have to ignore that for today. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is ensure that the firearm is in fact unloaded. So on the left-hand side, or it could be on the right-hand side, go ahead and press the magazine release button, pull out the mag. Okay, the magazine is empty. Uh, go and grab the slide and pull back and look down the barrel. There's no rounds in the barrel, so we're good to go. All right, go ahead and set that off to the side. I think the first thing we'll do is go ahead and just wipe off the magazines, and uh, we will go from there. Okay, with just a drop or two of lubricant on a patch, just go ahead and wipe off the top of your mag. There's some powder deposits on these. We could take them apart and clean them. Um, I would probably do that just as a separate video because you don't necessarily have to. Some guns do come with some machine oil in them from the factory, but uh, these, gun, these magazines are fairly clean, so they're going to be good to go. So just go ahead and wipe off the tops. Okay, we're going to repeat that for all three magazines, and we'll come right back. So this is how dirty the, uh, the patch was after just wiping them off. They're, they're not too bad. We can maybe go over them one more time just to get out some of the heavier deposits. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and just hit them with the dry patch because we don't want to leave any extra lubricant on them. You really don't want to get any kind of oil on your ammunition, especially in, around the area of the primers. So there's already some, some protective coating on here. So just go ahead and wipe them off lightly with a cotton cloth and just set them off to the side. And uh, we will move on to our next step. All right, so to disassemble the firearm, all we have to do is pull back on the slide and use your thumb to press up on this slide stop slash slide release. Uh, and then after that, there's a little lever right here, a takedown lever. All we have to do is just pull that lever down. It's going to lock into place. Pull back on the slide and release. Pull the trigger and the slide will come right off. Very simple. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and start off with the frame first. Okay, now, over lubrication is something we do not want to do. Again, just a couple drops of oil on your patch. We're just going to go ahead and wipe everything off. And as we remove those powder and carbon deposits, what you're going to notice is some of those wear areas where you're going to start to see bare metal. Uh, that's going to be showing you those metal-to-metal -metal contact points that you have on the gun every time you're firing the firearm. If you want to, you can put a drop or two of oil on a brush and just go ahead and brush everything off. This one is not too dirty. Uh, there are some carbon deposits around here, which we're going to work on with some Q-tips here in a little bit. But if your patches are coming out fairly dirty, you're going to want to change them out frequently. 
We also tend to get a buildup uh, right around here down in this area because there's just a lot of little cracks and crevices where powder and, and all that other fun stuff can get, can get caught. We're also going to clean out the inside of the grip. That's something a lot of people don't do. If you shoot in a sandy or dusty area, you can start to get debris in there and that can start to back up after a while too. So just go ahead and wipe all the surfaces down. It looks pretty good right now. It's coming out clean. I'm starting to see that uh, worn through metal so we can see the areas where we're going to have to make sure we have lubrication. All right, let's go ahead and clean out that pistol grip. Now, for whatever reason, this batch of patches that I'm working with are fraying off pretty bad. I don't normally get that. I'd probably return them if I had a chance to, but I've already used about a quarter of them. So a couple drops of oil on here. Just go ahead and go down that pistol grip and just scrub a little bit. And you might be surprised with how dirty it is when you take the cleaner out, when you take the patch out. So we're going to go from the bottom. And then we're going to repeat this process with a clean patch afterwards. So there was carbon and oil and a little bit of crud that was in there, and now it's nice and clean. Okay, we're going to show you the lubrication points on the uh, frame here, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, slide. So we want to clean off the rails, drop oil on your Q-tip, just go ahead and scrub under this area in here, and also scrub off the top. I'm going to do this as a two-step process. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wipe this stuff on, hit it with a clean uh, Q-tip, and then put on a protective coat or a lubricating coat. Scrub in the back here. Little dog's back there howling. I think he wants some attention. Yeah, hey, I'll be there in a little bit. You hang tight, okay? Okay, we're going to repeat this process uh, two or three times until more of that carbon comes off. You guys can do the same, and uh, we will come right back. Again, just go ahead and scrub the inside of the rails, all around the rails here. You really can't uh, mess it up. Okay, we're going to wipe off the rails with a dry cotton swab just to get that buildup off there. Something like cleanse oil and CLP. What that's going to do is that's going to break down the carbon and the fouling and the lead. And that's going to uh, release it so that you can remove it. I'm going to take a brush and just go ahead and scrub down here a little bit. That's going to break up those deposits that are around this area. It's pretty dirty. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wipe that out with a dry patch. Get all that out of there. Okay, so it took a lot of Q-tip work to kind of get around here and just keep scrubbing and scrubbing. I would just use a wet Q-tip and then a dry Q-tip. And there was quite a bit of uh, buildup around this area. It just traps all that powder and crud. It's pretty much good to go. Again, just drop a lube on a Q-tip. Just kind of wipe everything down and make sure it all has a, a protective coating on it and you're all set to go. Okay, now the next thing we am going to do is take another Q-tip with some lube on it. Just go ahead and wipe off the rails on the top and the sides. There we go. Okay, the top right here. And get in there on the sides. Any place that you can see where that uh, black finish is starting to wear through and you can see bare metal, you want to make sure you've got a little bit of oil on there. Okay, right here also. And the sides. There we go. And there's one thing I didn't show you that I like to use. Um, you're not required to do it, but we'll show you when we get to the slide. So that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and set that off to the side, and uh, we should be all set to go. Okay, so now make sure that you keep oil off the lens. Don't spray the whole gun down. Otherwise, you have to clean off the glass. That could cause a problem or some smudging or some scratching. So we're not going to obviously spray anything on the gun, but we will wipe it down eventually. Go ahead and squeeze your guide rod and your spring. It is captive, which means that it's not going to come apart in two pieces. Drop oil on a patch. Go ahead and wipe it off, and we'll just set this off to the side. Just give it a good wipe down. Uh, please note that you're going to want the flat end towards the rear of the gun and this little small bolted end or this little washer area uh, towards the front when we reassemble. All right, go ahead and remove your barrel. Okay, again, same situation. Uh, lubed up cloth. Go ahead and just wipe off the outside of the barrel. This will just take off any powder or any fouling that's on the barrel. This one cleans up pretty easily. I think it's maybe a melanite finish they use on these guns or maybe a nitride. Pay attention to the back area. This is going to be the dirtiest part. Uh, this is where a lot of your powder is going to accumulate and a lot, of your, a lot of your crud just in general. I just like to wipe it off. We're going to take a brush. Again, drop oil on it. Just go ahead and scrub the back. And this is fine because we're going to clean this whole thing off before we get done with it. And it does have a, a somewhat polished feed ramp, which is going to be bare metal. That's going to be normal. That's fine. Okay, take your cloth, go ahead and just wipe that off. You really get deposits on the sides of these little lugs right here too. You want to make sure that these stay nice and clean. Okay, at this point, we're just going to put a couple drops of oil on a patch just to kind of get the barrel kind of pre-soaking or marinating as I like to call it. And uh, again, just one single patch, a few drops of oil. Go from the back to the front, just go ahead and get it in there. and just You can just push it. It'll The rifling will automatically push the patch through. It'll kind of swirl it. You can pull it back if you need to. Okay, go through it again. There we go. Now, at this point, you have a lot of options. Okay, you could get your bristle brush that you would screw on here. Again, back to the front. Unscrew it back to the front again. Put a patch through it and basically be finished if you want to. That's one option. Otherwise, we could just scrub it out. 
with this type of brush, if you happen to buy one of these, you just scrub it a couple times and then run a patch through and you're all clean and you're ready to go. Otherwise, I'm going to show you guys how to use a boar snake because they're one of the handiest, easiest things you can use, especially if you're out at the range. Basically, it's just, um, just a, a piece of woven material here and you've got some copper bristles that are set for a particular chamber. This one's made for a 9mm 380. There's a little weight right here. Uh, just go ahead and put a drop of lubricant in front and in back of those bristles, okay? And then from the back of the barrel to the front, drop the weight in and just pull it through. Now this is not gonna give you the kind of deep clean that a good bristle brush cleaning and a copper solvent, all that stuff's gonna do. But if you pull it through a couple times and the barrel's nice and shiny and you see no deposits in there, then you should be absolutely fine. All right, not sure if you guys can see that, but uh, the barrel is nice and shiny inside. Okay, we're all set to go. Go ahead and set that off to the side. I just have a general coating of lubricant all the way around it. So, all right, now to clean out the slide, it's pretty simple. A couple drops of oil on a patch. Just go ahead and wipe out the area. The nice thing about this pistol is it's fairly large. So there's lots of room in there. I've got, I'd say, average size hands. You want to definitely push it through all the cracks and crevices and just go ahead and wipe down the whole surface area. What you don't want to do is get any oil back in this crevice back here where your firing pin is, this channel back here where the striker is. Uh, we want to make sure that that stays dry, so I tend to hit that with a dry Q-tip. So we're just going to go ahead and wipe it off. Uh, pay special attention to the front where the hole is where your little firing pin is going to come out. That area right there is going to be really dirty, so go ahead and scrub that off. I like to hit that with a Q-tip a couple times. You can hit it with a brush if you want to, but we want to try to keep as much uh, oil and liquid or whatever cleaner out of this area where your firing pin is because you don't want to get that to get mucked up. That will accumulate uh, over time, but as we scrub it, you can see how much uh, carbon deposits we have on there and spent power, uh, powder and fouling and all that fun stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and just give that a little scrub here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Hit that with the dry Q-tip. We're gonna leave this area dry. We don't want any oil here. It's the last place that you want dirt and debris to accumulate. And uh, look at that, it's coming off nice and clean. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good. All right, now we're gonna focus on these little channels inside the slide and to get those clean, simple process, drop oil on a Q-tip. Go ahead and take the Q-tip and just run it down the channel. I'm gonna do this once with a wet Q-tip, once with a dry Q-tip, and then one more time with a wet Q-tip and that'll leave an appropriate amount of lubrication in the channels for proper function. You okay over there? All right, and then go ahead and just wipe out the back area with the same Q-tip, that's gonna be fine. Okay, again, you do not want to get any oil in that center channel like I said before. Okay, so go ahead and grab a dry Q-tip. We're not going to take off the back plate. It's not necessary for this cleaning. So just go ahead and take your Q-tip and put it in this channel. Just scrub a little bit. We'll see if anything comes out. Okay, that is a little bit dirty. We may do a little more advanced maintenance on it, but for right now, we are doing okay. So, all right, looks pretty good. Okay, dry Q-tip down those channels one more time. Let's go ahead and get that carbon out of there. There we go. Okay, one drop of lube on the Q-tip, run it down the channels, and this will be all set. There we go. Not sure if you guys can hear that dog. That is not my stomach, just for the uh, just for the record. So, little guy wants attention. Hey, we'll play with you in a little bit. You just chill, you just chill, we'll be fine. All right, now this little area up here is a little hard to get in because it's kind of compact, because there's just not a lot of space and I really can't get my fingers in there. So, take your patch, put it on a cleaning rod. As usual, drop of oil, you know the routine. Go ahead and push it in from the front and just scrub. And that'll get any buildup that's in that area taken care of. We're not going to worry about drying it out or hitting it up again. It's going to be fine. And uh, eh, it's not super dirty. I think we're all set to go. All right. So at this point, I think we are ready for the process of reassembly. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. For reassembly, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and just take your slide and drop your barrel in there. Okay. It's going to be nice and flat. You're all set to go. Looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and take your guide rod spring combo. You're going to have that small end towards the front, the flat end towards the rear. You're going to push that in the slot up on the top here. There you go. And go ahead and squeeze it, lock it into place. It's going to fit, it's going to lock into a little divot that's cut into the barrel. And this is how it should look from the side. So if it's angled up, obviously you have an issue. If it's off to the side, you have an issue. It should be nice and flat in there and that looks pretty good. So make sure that it is uh, centered. So it's going to look just like that when you have it reassembled properly. There we go. Okay, go ahead and take your frame either in your right hand or left hand. Uh, notice that the lever is down. We're going to need to lock the lever up when we put the slide back on and lock it back into place. So go ahead and just get it back on those tracks. Go ahead and pull back. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and pull it together and pull back. Oops, there we go. Make sure the lever's down. Pull back and lock the slide open like that. And then you can simply push the lever this way. It's locked. 
Go ahead and release the slide. I do like to uh, dry fire it a couple times, so double check and make sure it's empty. It is. Go and just give it a couple, a couple charges there and pull the trigger. Okay. Check the reset. Good to go. Okay. Let's make sure that it will lock open on empty just to double check. Empty magazine in, pull back. Okay, it does lock back. It's empty. And that's it. So what we're gonna do to finish it up, again, one last drop of oil on a patch and just go ahead and wipe off the outside of the finish and you guys are all set to go. So I wanna thank you guys for watching today. If you picked up this pistol, uh, chime in below and let me know how it's been working for you. If you have any special part of the uh, cleaning process that you like to go through. This one's got, again, this melanite finish or whatever finish they use on, I think it's melanite. Uh, excellent, super easy to clean up. It does age well. And this is a very, very handsome looking pistol. I mean, I do like it. It looks great with that red dot on there. Ghost Trigger, all that fun stuff. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This is Travis P. Levin. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Check me out. We've also got a podcast that we do called Caliber Corner, which happens either Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. or Fridays at 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we talk guns and ammo. Make sure you check it out. But in the meantime, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, guys, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.